I want to welcome you back. We've been talking about bitterness, and bitterness is really tough to address because you don't want to step on anybody's toes, and I certainly have not meant to do that. There was a time in my life when I was really bitter. I was, and yeah, you go figure, a former unfaithful spouse would be bitter. I just was, and there's a lot of reasons why I was bitter. Samantha was bitter, and she had to walk down that road of bitterness. And as I said in one of the previous blogs on bitterness, all bitterness, all resentment starts out as hurt. And if you've been betrayed or if you have been unfaithful, part of the reasoning and justification in your mind behind your affair is feeling hurt and feeling violated or rejected or feeling ignored or like a third child. So there's bitterness on both sides of the equation that fuels our resentment and fuels our behavior. Now, what I've learned from Rick, and Rick says this a lot, is a lot of bitterness flows from a mentality of, I want my life back. Or, better said, I want my old life back. And what we're essentially saying is, I wish that none of this ever happened. I want to go back to the part of my life when I didn't know about the affairs, the addictions, the private life, this, that, or the other. I want to go back to a time where I was best friends with my best friend and didn't have to know that my best friend was actually cheating with my spouse. We can, in many ways, want to go back to our life before disclosure and the carnage of it all, and I understand that better than you might think. I understand it better that I'm going to be able to do it justice today, but I'm going to try my best. There was a time I wanted to go back, not because I longed to be with my affair partner, but I longed to go back to the time where there wasn't carnage every day, there wasn't pain every day, there wasn't hurt every day, Samantha wasn't crying or bawling every day, we weren't living in a new city, in a new state. I mean, I wanted that too. And bitterness is empowered by a mentality of, I want my old life back. And this is going to be tough, but I have to tell you, if you're watching this, if you're involved in recovery, one of the most difficult facets of healing, beginning your recovery road or sustaining your recovery road, is really understanding that you have to come to a point that you accept the life that you have right now. So one of the ways that you defeat and diffuse bitterness, because I want to get into that a little bit, is understanding acceptance. Now, I'll tell you, Samantha and I both had our own road of acceptance. I had so many people kind of yelling and screaming and calling me names and shaming me when my affair came out that I kind of rushed into acceptance quicker because of the fact that I didn't really have a choice. I had to start my career over. I had to try and care for Samantha. I had to care for my uh, six-week-old as well as our five-year-old and our four-year-old. There was a lot going on. Acceptance for me uh, was incredibly abrasive, but it pushed me where I needed to be. Samantha, however, uh, it was a little bit longer. There was an absorption phase. There was an incredible amount of time that it took her to accept it, not because she was so slow, but because the pain was so immense. But one of the ways that you diffuse bitterness is acceptance. Um, Rick says this all the time, if you can't accept where you're at, you'll never be able to get where you need to be. And if you want to diffuse bitterness, if you want to undercut resentment, you've got to come to the point where you can accept where you're at and stop wanting your old life back. Because as long as you want your old life back and as long as you stay anchored to that, you're going to get bitter and angry and resentment is going to fuel your day and your daily agenda and bitterness is going to creep in and you'll never be able to accept where you're at. For those of you that subscribe to Faith, 
I recommend that you utilize the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I ch cannot change, the courage to change those things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Now, if you don't subscribe to faith, I want to help you because I think there's a way to have that as a mantra, if you will, every day where you can say, through courage and relentless effort, uh, I'm going to find the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change that, those things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Because you've got to have an exercise that you go through every day. You've got to have something that you anchor to every day to accept where you are at. For me as an unfaithful, driving to my new job in my new city in my new state, uh, almost every day, I said to myself, I accept where I'm at. I put myself here. I did this. I am where I am because of my own fault, my own choices. But thank God I'm not alone because, Father, you're here with me. Now, if you're not a Christian, you can still say that every day to yourself. It, it becomes a mantra of, I am where I am because of my own choices. I've put myself here, and I choose to go forward. If you're a betrayed spouse, you can, again, if you subscribe to faith, you can pray a number of prayers. If you don't subscribe to faith, there's still some things and exercises that you can do to get you through the day. But I want to encourage you. When Samantha and I both, in our own recovery roads, accepted where we were at, it freed us to do recovery work. And as we did hardcore recovery work, even when we were angry, even when we were struggling, even when we were fearful, even when we were uncertain, as we diffused bitterness it, and as we were able to accept where we were at, we were able to move forward. I hope today that this helps you because you've got to accept what has happened. You have to accept what you have done or what your spouse has done. You cannot allow your stubbornness, your pride, your success, your... Your, your desire to control things, you cannot allow that, those benefits, those struggles, or what have you, you cannot allow them to prevent you from accepting where you're at. If you don't accept where you're at, you're not going to be able to get further down the road to healing. Mm -hmm.